Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing the adrenal glands. These are the endocrine glands that sit on top of the kidneys, like little hats. I separated these out because they have multiple functions and different parts of the adrenal gland produce different hormones in response to different events. The outer part of the adrenal gland is called the cortex. The inner part is called the medulla. We have already learned that the adrenal medulla responds to autonomic nervous system stimulation and makes two hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are released into the bloodstream and help amplify the sympathetic nervous response. The outer layer, or the adrenal cortex, makes three different types of hormones. You will be learning about cortisol in the next video about the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. You will learn more about the sex hormones, androgens, in the reproductive system, and today we're going to be talking about aldosterone. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone loop is perhaps the most complicated of the homeostatic feedback mechanisms. It starts in the kidneys. Within each nephron of the kidney is an area called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. This area monitors the blood pressure of the incoming blood and the sodium levels of the filtrate. It does this by utilizing mechanoreceptors to measure the stretch of the incoming blood vessel and chemoreceptors to measure how much sodium is available in the filtrate. When either the blood pressure or sodium levels get too low, the cells of the juxtaglomerular apparatus release a hormone called renin. This is the start of the pathway. Renin is a hormone which is also an enzyme. Once released into the bloodstream, it circulates throughout the body. Its action is to convert angiotensin, a protein produced by the liver, which is normally inactive in the blood, into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 then continues to circulate in the blood until it meets another enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, in the lungs. ACE will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has multiple functions. First, it's going to cause widespread vasoconstriction of the arterioles throughout the body. As the overall volume of blood vessels decrease due to vasoconstriction, this raises the blood pressure. Angiotensin II also acts on the cortex of the adrenal gland, triggering it to release the hormone aldosterone. Aldosterone acts on the kidneys to change the permeability of the kidney tubule to sodium. It causes the kidney to actively retain sodium. This in turn, due to osmosis, will allow water to be retained as well. These two mechanisms will raise the sodium content of the blood as well as raise the blood volume due to the retention of water. Therefore, this entire loop, which involves the adrenal glands, the liver, the lungs, and two different parts of the kidneys, is a negative feedback mechanism. The stimulus is low sodium or low blood pressure. The receptor and the control center is the juxtaglomerular apparatus of the kidneys, and we have multiple effectors, hormones, the adrenal glands, and aldosterone. The end result should be a rise in blood pressure and sodium, which will shut off the release of renin. A clinical approach to this system is that if you interfere with one of the steps, you can actually lower blood pressure. If you have ever heard of an ACE inhibitor, you might know that it is a medication that people take to lower their blood pressure. So think about it. Where would an ACE inhibitor disrupt this loop? An ACE inhibitor would inactivate the ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, that is produced in the lungs and acts to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Without angiotensin 2, you wouldn't get vasoconstriction or production of aldosterone, and the blood pressure would not be increased. This should help people control their blood pressure. A different hormone, atrial natriuretic peptide, or ANP, has the opposite effect of aldosterone. 
ANP is secreted by the heart in response to stretching of mechanoreceptors in the heart walls when blood volume is too high. ANP inhibits the release of renin and increases sodium excretion. This in turn lowers blood volume and therefore blood pressure. That's it for today. See you in class.